Our help comes from the Lord, who is making the heavens and the earth. Open our lips, O Lord, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Good morning and welcome to morning prayer on Monday. Our Benedicite Alteroa. O give thanks to our God who is good, whose love endures for ever. You sun and moon, you stars of the southern sky, give to our God your thanks and praise. Sunrise and sunset, night and day, give to our God your thanks and praise. All mountains and valleys, grassland and scree, glacier, avalanche, mist and snow, Give to our God your thanks and praise. You kauri and pine, rata and kawhai, mosses and ferns. Give to our God your thanks and praise. Dolphins and kahawai, sea lion and crab, coral, anemone, pippi and shrimp. Give to our God your thanks and praise. Rabbits and cattle, moths and dogs, kiwi and sparrow and tui and hawk. Give to our God your thanks and praise. You Māori and Pākehā, women and men, all who inhabit the long white cloud, give to our God your thanks and praise. All you saints and martyrs of the South Pacific, give to our God your thanks and praise. All prophets and priests, all cleaners and clerks, professors, shop workers, typists and teachers, job seekers, invalids, drivers and doctors, give to our God your thanks and praise. All sweepers and diplomats, writers and artists, grocers, carpenters, students and stock agents, seafarers, farmers, bakers and mystics, give to our God your thanks and praise. All children and infants, all people who play, Give to our God your thanks and praise. So we take a moment to recall one benefit for which to give God thanks this day. We join with the churches around the world to remember the English reformers and martyrs. In 1555, Mary Tudor tried to confirm the return of England to the Catholic fold by executing a number of leading Protestants. In fact, this action more than anything else undermined Mary's popularity, gave the Protestant cause a heroic status and left a lasting legacy of anti-Catholic bigotry in England for many years. The most prominent of these martyrs were Nicholas Ridley, Bishop of London, and Hugh Latimer, Bishop of Worcester, both of whom were burned at Oxford on the 16th of October, 1555. And so this day we pray particularly for our brothers and sisters in Christ in the Catholic Church, Universal and the Roman Catholic Church. Our sentence for today. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint and I know that I shall not be put to shame. Our collect for today. Ever living God, your saving power is always at work, and by the witness of your faithful martyrs, you light a candle which cannot be put out. May the fire of your spirit burn within us, and the vision of your light guide every step, that we may be constant in your service. Through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Our reading for today is taken from John chapter 13. Jesus washes the disciples' feet. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put in, into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, 
and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. Verses from Hebrews chapter 12, A Joyful Assembly. We have come before God's holy mountain, the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. We have come before myriads of angels in festal gathering, before the assembly of the firstborn citizens of heaven. We have come before God, the judge of all, before the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant. We are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Let us therefore give thanks to God, thus ex offering acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. We come now to a time of intercession where we pray for the church and the world and we give thanks for God's goodness. We pray particularly this day to the God of Abraham, Sarah, Hagar, Isaac, Ishmael and Jacob, joining with our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world to pray in the name of Ihu Kraiti, Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. God of all nations, we pray lamenting the destruction of your people in Israel and Palestine. Their blood cries out from the ground and we cry out for justice and peace. Bring your comfort to all who mourn, your compassion and healing to all who are injured, your peace to those who walk in fear and the shadow of death. We pray for restraint and a turning from violence, for reconciliation rather than revenge. Guide and direct by the wisdom of your Holy Spirit that we may use our voices and our lives to promote justice, peace and security for all. We know it is your will to hold both heaven and earth in a single peace. So give peace to your church, peace among the nations, peace in our homes and peace in our hearts. Protect our most vulnerable brothers and sisters in Christ in war zones around the world this day. That the church would be a beacon of hope for all people through their testimony and action, and that the international community might work towards lasting peace in the Holy Land. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
We pray for our new government, newly elected this weekend. Eternal God, fount of wisdom, we ask you to bless the representatives we have elected. Grant that through their discussions and decisions we may solve our problems effectively, enhance the well-being of our nation and achieve together a fairer and more united society. Help us all to make and keep this country great, a home for all its different peoples, and grant to our government and all its representatives imagination, skill and energy that there may grow among us aloha and peace. Through Christ we pray. Amen. And we pray for ourselves, giving thanks for all that God has blessed us with, asking for his nearer presence this day that all we do and say may lead to his glory and share his love. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this new day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger and guide us to do always what is right in your eyes. Through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. As Christ teaches us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may abound in hope. Amen. Thank you for joining me to pray together today. May God bless you in your week ahead. Go well. <laughs>